Company of Heroes history. Hello and welcome to another episode of Company of Heroes history. Uh, this is episode 13, I believe. We're really flying through it. And uh, as you can see, today we're going to be reviewing a game between Razor and Architect. So Architect is playing under Victoire here. Uh, and I hope this will be an interesting game to watch because it is on a new map for patch 1.5. This, I'm sure you'll recognize, is Bo Lowlands. And um, yeah, this is a map that only was released in patch 1.5 of the game. It's quite different here uh, than the version we would see today uh, for a couple of reasons. I'll show you quickly. One thing is there is four victory points, two on each side of the map, uh, here and here, and here and here rather than having the three victory points today. So we use one in the left, one in the middle, where there's plus 60 munitions is on this version of the map, and one on the right hand side. You can also see that some of the uh, points over on the sides are a little bit different. Uh, the munitions when fuel balance is slightly different than we'd see today. Um, anyway, there you have it. So let's have a look at this game. I've chosen this one because it's a very popular game. Uh, the most popular game that was played on Bow Lowland. So I think it's interesting to see uh, exactly why it was so popular. I don't remember seeing this uh, when the game first came out, so I'm interested to see it. <laughs> Architect not happy not to have been able to get that wire down on this point, and now it looks like Razor could be the one to get the wire down instead, although these Volks Grenadiers come at just the right time, so it won't be, that won't be the case. Oh, interesting, actually, there's no way to run through here as well. There we go, the wire war continues this time. It is Razor getting the deck down, making sure he's going to keep control of this plus 16 munitions in the middle. Uh, yes, yeah, so on the current version of the map, this cliff here is not actually a cliff, a full cliff, and you can walk up it. Uh, so the northern base uh, can't be sort of trapped uh, away from this um, just by blowing up the bridge, which is something we often saw. Um, and it resulted in very long stalemated games that were quite unpleasant. Uh, the map today is a little bit different. There's a few more ways around, little needly ways to get around. Um, and it makes it slightly better than this version of the map, I would say, although still one of the less popular uh, one versus one maps for sure. So Vox Grenadier first into an MG from Architect, and it looks like he's going to focus on this left-hand side. And who can blame him when he's got this uh, munitions point locked down pretty nicely? Although sometimes you can get a bit lucky, and if you're shooting at something through here, you can sometimes, uh, your bullets can luckily take out the... Uh, these wooden fences and allow you to sneak through. Uh, not the case this time, I think that's more f likely to happen, if I'm not mistaken, uh, with heavy machine guns and uh, MG42s rather than... Uh... Oh, that's also, this is a pathway in the current version of the map. That would also be a pathway up, but not in this one. So there really is only one way to get up to there and back. Um, oh, this is not going well from Pioneers. Capping while standing in negative cover, that is uh, a pretty much a perfect storm. They do luckily manage to sneak out of there, but um, uh, pretty lucky to have done so, I think. Uh, more wire going down here, presenting any flanks. It looks like Architect is really keen to lock down this side of the map tight. Make sure he keeps it all under control. These engineers aren't going to be able to cap again, standing in negative cover because of this water. Uh, negative cover and while capping is really a bad situation and you're going to be taking a lot of additional damage. Uh, Architect's done a pretty good job of locking down inside of the map. Looks like he's even going to try and get a thing out here to make sure he gets this plus 10 munitions point under his control as well. Uh, oh! Will this MG run to get the suppression? If it does, and anyway, I think these uh, the squad wouldn't be able to handle that. They're slightly weakened engineer squad anyway. This very low health squad didn't manage to quite reinforce effectively. Um, so... It's going out to the field, but it could go down to a single bullet, I would think, so he has to be a little bit careful there. Um, but yeah, although Architect has managed to sort of lock down his engines and has a nice bit of control over the map, he hasn't actually capped the points. Uh, the uh, medium fuel emissions here, uh, which is a large part of his income, you'd think, so uh, he hasn't had a great deal of fuel income in particular, just relying on that single plus 10. Uh, if he's going to skip a tier 3, that could be a little bit of trouble. Oh! And just as we thought, not enough uh, health on that um, Pioneer squad to cap and to pressure, particularly when there could be riflemen lingering around. Uh, let's switch over quickly now to Razor and see what he's up to. It looks like he's always oh, he's switched into a WSC. Interesting. He's obviously decided uh, he clearly can't uh, make any 
inroads onto the side of the map without the uh, additional help of a sniper in this case. Uh, so we went for a pretty quick transition actually. So we went, looked like we went for three engineers at the start into two rifles and now into a weapon support center. Mm, very interesting build and unusual certainly. I think the two engineer, three rifle, uh -huh. and then the transition to a weapon support center was more common than three NG, as we're seeing here, and two rifle. Yeah, it means it will be slightly weak to it if um, Architecture decides to do any sort of concerted pushes on his side. He hasn't got a lot of fighting forces that will be able to hold that back. But this sniper is going to be able to help certainly a lot of the time. If, yeah, let's see, this is going to be very hard for Architect to push this back, particularly if there's anything supporting this squad. Sniper not deciding yet to push out. It's going to be a little bit more passive there. This rifleman squad is kind of sort of staying under fire. Um, on oh, two volts now, he's going to have to get out of there, although he does have this locked down because we can't go up this way as we can today to get into this, so that is completely locked off. He won't be able to take the fuel back or the VP, although he will be able to uh, cut that off quite handily. Oh, sniper now pushing out. Gets the first shot off on this MG42. MG tries to take a little pop back, but the, uh, the recloak is fast enough. Architect is going to have to get out of there and does do so. Oh, a big cutoff here for... Uh, Architect Razor's going to have to struggle with this a little bit, I think. It's going to cut off a lot of his income. Both a plus 10 munitions and a plus 10 fuel. Being locked off there. Oh, and the second cut off here as well. It gets even worse. It gets even worse. Now, he won't have any income whatsoever apart from this plus 5 munitions here. Well, it looks like they are going to trade sides somewhat. Um, uh, Razor diverting all of his forces onto that left hand side to get himself a third. Uh, rifleman squad now, so it looks like he only went for a single sniper before deciding to switch back to the rifles, although HMG is coming out now. It's very extended tier 1 here from uh, Razor. I would be a little bit worried if I was him of uh, a very fast tech into Pumas. Could really hurt him. He has a little bit of defense with the rifleman if he gets sticky bombs. Um, and of course the HMG's uh, armor piercing ability, although that is very inconsistent, has to be said. Uh, nice move here. Blocking off the victory point here. He wasn't able to, you weren't having to sneak around this top side as you are today. So that one little bit of wire there will prevent that. Uh, Pioneers will, looks like, be able to get away. A couple of missed shots by the sniper, although it could be a last little second shot, and it, indeed it is. So the sniper does get that final shot off, take out the Pioneer squad, uh, and that's a little bit of a, a little bit of a loss there. It's maybe may forced to build another Pioneer or something to get out his tech buildings. Uh, certainly not ideal. Very strange situation here where uh, both players have kind of locked away um, using wire one of the victory points, but the advantage that Razor has is that the fuel point here has also been locked away as a result. Whereas on this side, he is able to decap the fuel and get it under his control in a way that Architect is not. Oh, here we go. Engineers are now flanking this squad. Looks like. Oh, he did go for a bike. Uh, you opted for the bike option rather than getting a sniper. Uh, that sniper is really playing with fire. I can't imagine that gets away. Does in fact go down. I think it only got one or two kills there. Did get a squad wipe on the pioneers, so that's always a nice move. But uh, I think Razor will be a little bit disappointed not to have got a bit more value out of that. Of course, it's one of those things that happens if you get trapped in a wrong situation. You can't really retreat. You'll just get chased down and killed anyway if you haven't set up any mines protecting the retreat path. Um, a little bit of a awkward situation. Oh, we've got a crawl bug here on this engineer was suppressed briefly before and now this guy has decided he's going to crawl all the way until he is retreated or something else. Oh, maybe it looks like capping the point kind of solved it there, so bit of luck there for Razor. I'm not going to have to do a full retreat to get that back online and under his control. Uh, yep, we've seen almost a complete switch in map control here. This is one of those strange things of having a, a map like this that's pretty much split in two with only one two ways of crossing between the two, other than through the uh, the northern base. Um, it really is asking for um, a kind of split down the middle and, ask, and forcing players to choose which side they want to hold. Because um, as soon as you divert any significant amount of forces to the other side, of course, um, they can just retreat and then push out on uh, the side that you've just vacated. Um, Nice little flank here from Razor. I'm not sure he's going to be able to take this out, particularly with the support of the bike. Although the bike is now under fire, even though it looks feels like it's in the fog of war. Of course, it can't retreat. Oh, I think Razor finished a trick there. Oh, a pack gun out there, taking a pot shot at the rifleman, revealing itself there. So uh, Razor, we have seen going for the motor pool. 
and a half track, of course. Um, he won't be surprised by the pack anymore. We'll know to be a little bit more careful uh, and not put his half track in harm's way uh, prematurely until he's made sure that there's nothing on the field that can cause him any trouble. Oh, this MG repositioned beautifully there. Uh, nice bit of awareness there from Architect knowing that the pack shot at those riflemen that he'd have to reposition this MG and did so really effectively. Very nice. A um, little bit of a pushback out on the right hand side, although he will get deterred by the half track and also the half track upgrading the quad um, to, the, to the, the quad anti air gun, um, as you might expect. Uh, he's probably under the impression that because the pack is on the left hand side of the map here, uh, pushing out from Architect's base, he should be able to push off uh, this pinning MG here quite easily with the half track, although it looks like he hasn't gone for that just yet. He looks, wants, looks like he wants to do it with, while also Where dropping off some uh, infantry behind. And he also has the Wyrkos of Great Storm. Well, it looks like the timing on this won't be quite right. Yes, it is. Ooh, not quite right. He's got him slightly closer, I suppose, but it, it looks like he'll have to rely on the quad half track to empty out that house uh, before he uh, pushes forward with this infantry. No, no great loss, I wouldn't think. In the meantime, on the left hand side, Architect has set up one MG. There's a second MG ready to set up right behind it, and that HMG in the building is not going to be doing anything yet. Okay, very quick to get his third MG. That's a lot of MG squads. Um, out of that house and back to base. Clearly the pack gun is nowhere close around unless he's trying to bait him into a pack gun that's waiting here. Perhaps with a mine nearby could easily be the case. Um, but as it is, it looks like Architect is setting up for a pretty passive game. Um, a lot of MG squads, which I think on a map like this, you can hold the uh, uh, choke points quite effectively with them, of course. But at the same time, oh, wire cutter upgrade here. It was used to get this VP back online, but he's going to have to retreat fairly quickly, and it's not going to yet feel the benefits of that, although he has now been able to cut this uh, wire in the middle as well and open up this path three through the middle. So he could be quite happy with. Um, half track being relatively passive. I haven't seen it, apart from chasing off that MG, I haven't seen it actually trying to push into the base. Uh, a mortar here in the base of Architect. Uh, it's trying to remove this HMG from the house, but it looks like it's been whiffing a few times here. Hasn't yet been able to hit and do too much damage. What's this one going on? It looks like they're all pretty much falling short. Uh, I wonder if that's deliberate. Oh, there we go, that one just hit. It's a little bit of damage. M8 now pushing over. I mean, he's going to be tempted to push into the base. Oh, it looks like he maybe wanted to go in there and drop an M8 mine. He's got just the conditions for a tasty M8 mine. Risky move, or look. The option is to sit on the edge of the base like he is doing, but I think that's a risky move in the merit itself too. He's pushing in there. Is that an M8 mine going down? We'll have to watch those munitions. Looks like he hasn't yet. Panzer Strike upgrade is in. Looks like he's focusing instead on trying to take out this mortar. Um, oh, mortar goes down, and uh, for at least for the short term time being, this MG will not be taken out of the house. Although there we go, pushing into the base like that. Was it worth it to lose? Um, an M8 upgraded with the armor skirts. I think you agree with me that that was a pretty poor trade for the mortar that can just be recruited uh, and reinforced with um, even Fox Grenadiers for a very cheap price indeed. Uh, yeah, not ideal for Razor, and also that's a nice little bit of salvage there, I think, say as well. Um, setting up the flank. Now, wow, the HMG is doing a lot of damage because of this road here. I'm not sure if it's actually negative cover, but um, at least it's not. It's a pretty poor level of cover there. Uh, Panzer Shrek, Panzer Faust even, he's on the house there, uh, not able to take it out. That Panzer Shrek shot as well, not able to take out the HMG, although they are taken out on the street anyway. A uh, nice move there from Archie to retake the left hand side, and again, we see the sides are switched once more. Um, Razor now has a little bit of control on the right hand side, whereas Architect has re-established control on the left. Uh, new sniper from um, Razor. An architect has decided to get out of there immediately, probably worried about retreating over that cover, losing squad, losing um, at the left of the squad, so he knew he had to get out of there pretty sharpish. Another HMG out from Razor as well. Let's switch over to architect very quickly. I'm interested to see uh, if he has decided to tech at all, uh, to retech. Looks like he's. Oh my goodness, he's continuing with um, tier two and actually getting another pack out. Now, that strikes me as a, as a very passive uh, and defensive move. Um, 
he knows that the fuel control has been relatively even throughout the game and he knows he doesn't have a great deal in the bank. Uh, so I don't think he would be worried too much about um, tier 4 at this stage. Um, maybe maybe it's, it's always a slight worry, but I don't think that would be at the forefront of his mind. But despite that, he has gone for a second pack gun in lieu of teching himself. He's also teching up now, but that pack gun coming in means he isn't, isn't going to be able to get a Sturm Armory, isn't going to be able to get any Stugs or Humors online anytime soon. Uh, and we see he has gone for the Terror Doctrine as well, so he's not going to be able to use a stew to kind of have to be that heavy armor or medium armor um, stopgap uh, to get him to something else. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm not over the moon uh, with the decision to build another pack, uh, although of course you want to be a little bit careful. You can, the uh, Quad Hardtrack is such a powerful unit, you can always lose. A lot of infantry if he does decide to go for a well-timed base trade as I know he's pushed forward. Nice move there. Getting the cloak on just in time to prevent the rifleman from spotting it and, and taking it out. Although this one guy here, he's a little bit of a show, uh, a show off. Doesn't want to be um, doesn't want to be cloaked. Wants to everything to see exactly what he's up to. Um, and yeah, giving away the location of that pack gun, so I wouldn't have thought Razor would be pushing in here too aggressively with that quad, particularly when the retreat is slowed by this water, if he does decide to back away with it. Uh, Mortar now out, and oh, this is awkward on this bridge, which of course is destructible. I think a mortal will take a long time to take it out, but... Um, be respectful, you've got to be careful having three, four units on that bridge at any time, really. No more shots going down. Looks like Razor may actually be keen on taking that out. Um, pushing in with the uh, Panzer Strike squad. Oh, and a shot from the pack gun does connect. Uh, and the oh, the quad half track was trying to back out of there. Backed out the wrong way. Instead of going forward and just getting into the base and outside of the firing arc of this pack gun, tried to go backwards and did go down for its trouble. Big retreat now from uh, Architect. I think he's sort of happy with that, what he managed to achieve there. And who can blame him? And knowing that he's now up to tier 4, uh, he's definitely in a position where he can sort out another power spike to sort of assert himself on this game moving forward. Um, this third MG that we I mentioned earlier on the left-hand side that I thought might have been slightly excessive is now proving its weight in gold, uh, enabling him to... Ooh, this MG might... Re Turns on its retreat path, just go the right way. Oh, that's really unfortunate for him. Um, didn't quite get out of there. Of course, the sniper's accuracy is not as high when units are on retreat uh, as when they are just standing around, so it's a little bit unfortunate for him. Now, it looks like Architect did go for the cap on this with a single Pioneer Squad. And knowing there's a sniper there, that must be sort of a, uh, a willing sacrifice he's making there to let the squad go down. Indeed, it does um, to get that. Well, I guess he was hoping to get a slightly more long-term um, decap on that, uh, but it's not to be. Um, Mortis now being a big part of pushing out on the right-hand side again, and I think he's relatively happy with the hold he has on the left. So, yep, he's bringing one pack and a, and a small fighting force here over to the right-hand side, and once he's cleared this HMG, he should be uh, pretty happy to push out there and make some inroads onto that. Um, Razor soft retreats that now, pushing back just a little bit. Um, and I'm sure he'll be wanting to try and maintain control of that as much as he can, because presumably he is taking for something else, maybe going tier 4 of his own. Um, yeah, interesting to see that. Um, Razor, of course, this is actually now, I think about it, his first, the first time he's being featured. Oh, Razor might be losing a weapon squad, although that mortar could have a clutch shot there. Very little health on this Vox Grenade squad. I'm terrified to see if this goes down. I know there's a fight going on over there, but one more shot here if it's well aimed. Oof. Looks like the MG did go down. That's what trying to get the flank off there. It wasn't to be. I'm really curious at how this low health squad will go down. I think one mortar shot shell could easily take this out. Boom! There we go. Whenever you see low health squads like that, uh, you just know that a mortar is going to absolutely demolish them, uh, and there it is. Uh, yeah, so Razor, this is his first time being featured, but he is uh, was really one of the class players um, of the early days of Company of Heroes, and even uh, he had a couple of periods of time where he uh, went away from the game and wasn't playing for a while, but he often came back uh, and could perform at the uh, at the top level. Um, all the way up until 2012, 13, I believe, he was still a pretty good player. Uh, at this stage, I think he was a member of the clan Warchild. 
alongside some other people that we'll be we'll be looking at as uh, as we go through this patch, in particular Golradir, who was um, the, the kind of unofficial leader of Warchild in terms of uh, play. He was absolutely one of the strongest people at this level of play. But the Warchild in general were one of those clans that kind of um, had a really important were a really important part of the community. They had a lot of strong players, yes, but they also um, contributed to the community by making um, strategy guides and things like that. Uh, that we'll review as we go through this patch. Oh, that MG could also get sniped on retreat. Looks like it will just start get away. Very nicely positioned sniper there from from Razor, taking advantage of the fact that it can be defended by these sort of choke points and uh, can fire from with relative impunity. Uh, yeah, so Razor, uh, brother of Bladed, um, I think, uh, were two really strong players who were both played on Warchild and uh, were kind of a features of the community, like pillars of the community for a long time here. Uh, flank is coming off here on this MG. Architect is alive to it, turns around and decides to turn around rather than retreat. Really get that off in time. Just gotta hope that this model here doesn't get sniped. And there's no reload. Oh, could reload. He does get the suppression down, but the second squad coming around the back. Now they have got around, he will have to retreat that, I think. In the meantime, on this side, oh, Volkswagen squad accidentally trying to rush that HMG, but the sniper does miss and he will be able to get away. Uh, heavy, uh, the uh, MG40 also gets away, and nice bit of luck there, and now a Panzer IV are on the field, ready to push off on this right side and do some damage. We haven't yet seen an answer to this from the, from the Allies, um, who knows if there's a Sherman about to roll out into the field, but we haven't yet seen anything that can really stand up to this. So we do have a short period now where Architect should be able to quite effectively push. Uh, on this right hand side, left hand side, and here we go. I mean, it's like going back and forth. It's a Sherman crocodile on the left, going in there. Oh, it does take out that that um, hat gun, runs straight into it. There's two Panzer tricks both hit, which is a minor miracle. And it was oh, look at that flame! Look at this, the sheer range on that thing. Absolutely insane. Oh, that's why I went for the second pack gun, fearing the crocodile and knowing that. Oh, already pet one. Just running around the base, doing absolute, causing absolute havoc. Another one pan strike hits, the other one doesn't. A damaged engine which will help him to clear this up. Now, although, of course, it does rely on the pan strikes hitting. There we do. We did get a couple more hits there. Main gun destroyed. Engine destroyed. Uh, this will go down in short order now, I think. Panzer Void was coming over to help. Uh, unnecessarily, in the end, it looks like the infantry did do a pretty good job of clearing that up. Uh, and the, even the MG42, desperate to get off a little bit of damage there and uh, contribute to the cause. Uh, this mod has been left on his side, undefended. It's interesting that uh, Architect never, even when he had some, um, even when he had the Panzer IV over, he didn't decide to break this uh, wire and get himself in there and be able to get some of this fuel under control. So Razor does have a good little map control advantage, although this retreating squad may go down. Looks like they will just about sneak away. One level of infantry veterancy now coming in for the Vemet as well, um, I think. Ooh, ooh, big shots, big shots, big shots, we'll get away. Um, I think that's a nice little thing to kind of strengthen the backbone of your team. Oh, Calliope Barrage comes in and takes out the MG. Did it also take out the pack gun? I can't see right now whether the pack gun go down, whether they attempted to recrew it. Looks like it's still there, and both can actually be recruited, so not the end of the world there, although that might be. Uh, oh my goodness, looks like the Panzer Strike did. The Panzer Strike was able to take out that sniper. I mean, when it's only that first shot, uh, it looks like it was trying to take out this um, mortar team. Uh, the time for which the sniper is decloaked is very short. Uh, so for this squad to be able to get its Panzer Shrek shots off and take out that sniper, give these guys a raise. Looks like the Panzer Shreks might have been buffed in this patch. I'll have to check that you know, when I'm editing the video and see if they did indeed get a, a buff or whether I'm just... Um, I'm sort of like overestimating the advantage that, well, I've just seen a couple of good um, performances by the Panzer Shreks and I'm interpreting that that is, um, that is actually evidence of a buff rather than just a bit of luck in a small sample size, we'll have to see. Uh, choosing not to cap this there, um, an M10 from Razor pushing out alongside this Calliope, Sherman Calliope, is going to be able to force this Panzer IV back, so I'm going to be a little bit careful there. Send some repair teams and maybe uh, recrew this pack gun if 
possible and really quickly scare away the M10 or in this Panzer Shrek squad with two Panzer Shrek should be absolutely plenty um, for the time being at least until there's more armor on the field. Uh, Architect finally does break down into this right hand side, is going to get this victory point on side uh, and hopefully be able to get this uh, fuel point under his control as well. That should make a really big difference. This pack on quietly sitting here, is he going to move back? Yeah, looks like he will to retreat and get away. Oh, just as I say that he's going to be able to get those online, these two rifleman squads and an HMG should put pay to that very quickly too. Uh, two Panzer Shreks, of course, incredibly helpful against the armoured targets, but against infantry, although they do have liable, are liable to snipe a little bit, uh, I'm not sure they're going to be able to do too much here. Do they want to even shoot with only two windows here? Oh, and a funny leg going off. Oh, that is a couple of nice shots there. <gasps> this rifleman squad's got to be really careful it doesn't go down. I'm very surprised by how that engagement goes. Oh, and it does get sniped on a retreat. Razor will be absolutely furious with that. Although he doesn't want to lose this squad, particularly if they drop the Panzer Shreks outside. Of course, Rifleman with Panzer Shreks drops Inspired Assault, which I think is a big mistake. Uh, inspired Assault, yeah, as you can see here, increases the rate of fire and damage, but makes them more susceptible to being hit, which effectively uh, makes them take more damage, although they were able to get away. In fact, that was extremely short as well. Uh, so I'm not exactly sure what was going on there. Um, looks like the cool, that was a little bit quicker than. Oh, where's this going? Going down on this uh, Volkswagen squad, capping the point. Uh, that is an enormous spread on that barrage. They're clearly doing it from a long max range, and it seems that they hit absolutely everywhere except for the Volkswagen. Uh, a little bit unfortunate there. Oh, we do see Allied War Machine. Looks like he's just going to try and trade these uh, M10s to try and take out the Panzer IV. Will they get the second uh, M10 refunded? It looks like he should. Uh, let's just see if he decides to rush them directly in and take out this Panzer IV and trade for it immediately, or whether he's a little bit more cautious. We'll have to see here. It hasn't decided to push back in, so it's an interesting one. He essentially traded health uh, on the Panzer IV for munitions there, rather than, oh, it is coming in again. Actually, it's actually still active as well. It's a very long ability. He hasn't decided to commit to that. Obviously, seeing the amount of repairs going down, it decided it wasn't worth it. Now, the real advantage of Allied War Machine is that you can essentially trade um, your munitions that you're, you bank quite easily as armor company for fuel and manpower, right? Because you you spend the 250 munitions or 200 munitions, and you essentially get tanks given back to you for free. Essentially, you're not having to pay the, the manpower or fuel costs. Look at the range on that machine gun nest. What the heck? Is it just me that, that seem does that seem extremely long range to anyone else? I mean, you can't in this patch yet see the firing arcs by clicking on it, so um, it, you can't quite tell if that is supposed to actually outside the arc. But let's have a little look from Razor's perspective. Actually, we might be able to get some sense of it. Oof, looks like maybe the end of the gun was just there. Another Calliope Barrage comes down. Oh, directly on the Panzer IV. That's a bit of luck. Although, it doesn't seem to be really doing a great deal of damage. Looks like it did blow up a mine there. That's been a nice move. And it seems like in this patch, it looks like they've removed the main gun, perhaps, maybe completely. Uh, and instead, we have the, the free uh, ability to use the uh, rocket barrage. It doesn't cost the munitions that it was costing in earlier patches. Now I think, you know, we're going to see it working as it does effectively today. Although, um, I'm not sure if the actual effectiveness of the rocket barrage ability itself uh, is the same in this patch as it is today. Uh, that's something we'll be able to get a sense of as we watch this game going forward. Panzer IV pushing forward again. Oh, nice shot there on the rifleman, taking out a couple of models. Although the riflemen are getting some good shots off on these um, MP40 squads. Oh, inspired assault with those Panzer Shreks. Absolutely fantastic stuff. This get Allied War Machine popped off though, so as I say, he's going to swap that 250 munitions uh, for essentially 420 manpower and 90 fuel there. Uh, and given the fact that uh, Architect did pop <laughs> Architect, so. Uh, a little bit surprised there by the sheer amount of Shreks that Architect does have online. And of course Inspired Assault does cost some munitions in, its, in and of itself as well. But, oof, there we go. Panzer Shreks popping off there, so 
does look like Ranger's in a bit of an awkward position now. He's got enough units on the field in terms of armor uh, to put up a bit of a fight, although he doesn't really have the infantry forces that uh, that might help him out against these large armies of Shrekt, um, Shrekt Grenadiers. Uh, so, although he has armor on the field, they are liable to go down very quickly, as we just saw. Um, whereas it might be a little bit more effective to... Uh, uh, was, to have more rifles on the field, get those bars, and that might start doing better stead against the Grenadier squads, and, and use the armor more as a support unit to help him out against the Panzer fours. Uh, although it looks like that's gonna, at least for the short term, he's gonna have to wait. He's decided to um, sort of move everyone to the other side of the map. Oh, it looks like Ark oh, did have the idea to recruit this pack gun, which is slightly too late in doing it. And it, and it should go down, suppose, pr supposing, oof, there we go, supposing that uh, Razor uh, does target them effectively, and indeed he does, takes us both out. They're still moved there, taking out 240 manpower's worth of pioneers, essentially. Uh, and uh, stopping the, whoa, look at that. That's some spectacular physical physics effects on that uh, telegraph pole there. Um, yeah, it prevents the pack being recruited and it's going to make his armor slightly more effective or slightly more difficult to counter from the perspective of Architect moving forward. So I think that's a good move. Um, might have also, though, have wanted to get that on side himself, uh, given that he's struggling a little bit with the armor um, of Architect. Although this is not an engagement, I think that Hans wants to be taking just a slight bit of... Uh, Mispositioning there, I think. Uh, sending one in alone ahead of the other means that it is liable to go down. Just taking too much damage before the other came in to help. Although here come the Super Shrek squads firing off a bunch more again, getting a lot of hits on these Sh Shermans, forcing them to move away. Wow, the M10 sniping infantry like nobody's business. Look at the M10. I think this might be the patch. I'll have to check this. This might have been the patch where it got a little bit of a buff to its maneuverability. Let's have a little look and see if we can recognize any like additional acceleration or something relative to the one we have today. And in this shot there, the Panzer, the, uh, the Panzer Shrek's are hitting so much more frequently than I'm used to. Look at that, another big hit. Good work. Oh, and now the short range climbing barrage comes in. There's a couple of nice hits off on that, but isn't enough again to really do any significant damage. I wonder if the actual rocket barrage was, because of the fact it was free in terms of munitions, I wonder if they nerfed its effectiveness in the short term, because this seems relatively underwhelming. Oh, well, I'm not sure I like this from Razor, he doesn't have the munitions for Allied War Machines, which does take out the Panzer IV, so I think he'll be relatively happy with that trade, although he's, of course he's traded, um, now he's going to end up trading his M10 as well, unless he gets a little bit of luck and is able to get out of there, he is able to get out, but of course he's just traded away his uh, veterancy. Always got to be careful as the allies because you need that veteran sea accruing on your tanks uh, if you're going to be able to stand up to the heavy armor, and particularly if they get any veteran sea on their armor as well. Moving into the lake, yay, does it get out? This M10 does manage to get away and preserve its armor. Now, see, crocodiles come in. There's an interesting choice there from Razor, aggressive choice, recognizing that it's the Panzer Shrek squads more than the armor that are going to cause some trouble into the lake. Game. Oh, but now Inspired Assault comes out as well, might get those quicker reloads, take that down. Indeed, it is the pack gun, excuse me. And a little bit of a misclick there. It's the pack gun that gets the final shot, so the aggressive move of going for that Crocodile Sherman to ooh, do more damage to the infantry squads uh, didn't play off in the end. Um, I think it could have been soon such a good set of getting a second Calliope out on the field. Um, these big, big blobs, particularly now they're using Spider Assault, big blobs of infantry could go down extremely quickly to a couple of uh, Calliope barrages or oh. They have been relatively underwhelming so far, I suppose, so the rifleman squad goes down. Here we go. Here is a Calliope Barrage. Let's see how it does. I mean, it's kind of missed. I think maybe it's a little bit of an issue with the elevation changes in this map, because it's hard to tell from this kind of isometric view. You can see from here uh, that this pack gun is actually kind of down the hill uh, from the pack gun that it was... Um, the pack gun is down the hill from the Calliope, therefore it was kind of protected behind the brow of that hill to an extent, I think. Look at that Panzer Shrek squad getting another hit off. Didn't penetrate in this occasion, but um, really long range nice hit. Uh, this two man rifle in the squad is going to be able to take out this pack squad though. Unless this guy with the Luger is able to headshot them both. Oh! They take him out, so now they just have to be careful to avoid the actual shots of the main gun. You get around there. These two guys 
Yeah. Doing their best for the cause, yeah. not deciding to get out there, Lucas, and just fight back. Um, committed to their jobs. Oh. I heard something very loud there, but I can't quite see what it was. Something went down. Oh, I think I might have missed the M10 going down, unfortunately. Um, at some point. Maybe a bit of a shame there. Uh, okay, let's switch back now. Briefly, let's go back over to Arcade Sign and see what he's up to. Uh, see what he's planning. Looks like the Tiger Ace can come on the field uh, relatively soon, although he's a long way away in terms of resources. Looks like he's invested in this Panther, first and foremost. Um, I, yeah, it seems as though he's getting a little bit of vet uh, more additional veteran center squads as well. It's going to be so hard for Razor to push back when if he doesn't have the particularly the upgrades to his rifleman, doesn't have a significant body of riflemen on the field. One of our uh, even these pioneers are so hard to kill with vanilla riflemen. Uh, upgraded the Browning. Uh, oh my God! Look at all this, these Panzer Shreks going forward. That is one squad with uh, a Panzer Shrek and one light machine gun, and then two squads with two Panzer Shreks each. I mean, this is an absolute anti-tank. One of our sectors has been cut off. Anti-tank sniper squad right here. It's very difficult to imagine how it's going to go. Oh, look at that! Also, the Panzer Shreks taking out infantry too. Is this the first patch we're going to see where the uh, Novemites have a couple of broken things in their favor? I mean, these Panzer Shreks seem to be incredibly effective. I haven't really seen them losing too much anti-infantry firepower. Um, well, certainly not as much as you might, ex might have expected by losing two of those... Is it Car 98s that they use? I'm not exactly sure. Um, oh, it decides to push in here, the HMG. I'm not going to be able to get the shots and get the suppression away, so... Uh, these guys are going to be fine, although the long-range Sherman, see this is where I think the decision to go for a crocodile only may not have been the optimal choice, although here comes a Calliope Barrage. Again, it's landing directly on top of the squads, but doing next to nothing. I mean, one squad lost a couple of models, but the other ones are able to get out of there handily. I'm very underwhelmed by the Calliope Barrage there. Maybe it needs to accrue some vet before it really starts to, uh, really starts to make all the difference, but um, I'm not sure at this stage. If that was too effective. Yeah, I was going to mention before briefly that uh, the I chose to go for a crocodile. I mean, crocodiles are an aggressive unit, right? You can push in there very aggressively and take out a lot of squads if you're lucky. But the thing with the Sherman is you can use it like like it was being used there, shooting from afar, uh, taking your time, and not necessarily pushing in aggressively, um, but able to sort of like take out a couple of units here and there uh, over time, and thereby do the damage against those infantry targets, perhaps doing a little bit more than the crocodile did if it kind of doesn't come off like it didn't in this case. Sherman now trying to rush around that panther, that's a brave move, panther's got a pretty quick uh, movement speed of its own, and of course that turret which does bring him quickly, circle shaving a panther that hasn't got engine damage is pretty much impossible. Panther does decide to get out of there though, doesn't go for the final kill on that Sherman, that might have been the best idea actually. Uh, with the pack gun there, if I wasn't able to take them both out, it was risking going down, and it's a very expensive unit. And of course, you never know uh, when the Allied player is just going to pop Allied War Machine and put you in a situation where you really don't want to kill the tank. Uh, so maybe a good kind of quiet move to get out there. Oof, and when you have the support of these Grenadiers coming forward as well, um, it doesn't seem like there's any rush, I think. With the Veterans here accruing and the Victory Point situation quite handily in his favour right now. Uh, although it looks like the victory points in the top are actually bugged in one way or another. Look at this. I mean, those, those first couple of shots landed directly on top of those Grenadier squads and didn't take them out. Did manage to get a couple of um, unit kills, but it's really not enough. Yeah, look, it seems like the victory points are bugged. It seems it's 3 1 there, whereas on the map you can see it's actually 2 2 in play. Interesting. Interesting point there. Um, uh, yes, so Architect, I think, will feel relatively comfortable. He's got the veterans he's accruing, he's got that coming in, he's got access to basically all the tiers now that he wants. You know, tier, he doesn't have the Sturm Armory, but I think with tier 2 and tier 4, you're really covering a lot of things, and he'll have access to the Tiger Race uh, as soon as he decides to start saving up. In that way, squad there, very low health now, that is great risk there. With only the mortars over there again, you could have seen another squad wipe on that low health squad. Uh, this pack could now go down. They're uh, not currently well defended and now these um, Grenade is pushing in, could easily take it out. Although the pack's getting a couple of nice shots off. Again, Sherman does a nice job there. 
couple of uh, shots on this. Grenadiers are now. Oh, he decides to pop inspired assault again to try and get the kills, putting himself at risk of losing these squads. One squad does go down. He drops a panzer strike in the process, and now the Pershing comes out. Oh, he's in big trouble now. The Panther is now decides to push in. Thinks it can take this Pershing head on with Veteran C1. I think it is in a decent chance. Now Veteran C2. Nicky with the support of these squads here. Oh, but the Pershing is getting a couple of really nice shots off on these Pioneers. I think he'll be happy to sit there with his front arm. Oh, takes up both Pioneers in one hit. Although there's rear armor hits from there. A little bit of luck there. Pat can to help out. Pershing's going to have to get out of there. Calliope Barrage comes in. Kills the gunner. Doesn't kill the Pat gun. Does get a uh, war machine going. He's got a, got a free Panther immediately. The looks like the Calliope Barrage did, in fact, manage to take out that pack gun. Well, the Sherman, the Sherman goes down as well. That's also going to be refunded. A Sherman plus um, Pershing Allied War Machine must be up there with the, the some of the most effective ones you can get even today. Um, it's Calliope not making really any effort to get out of there. Maybe he's hoping this will go down too, but again with the veterancy. I think the veterancy is almost more valuable than getting it back for free. I mean, he's, he's going to get it back. Um, let's switch over to Razor and see these, the benefits of his allied war machine. Yep. Yeah. All these coming back out again. They're all going to be able to push back out on the right hand side. Uh, this one still has allied war machine above it, although I'm not sure that would be refunded at this point. Yep, yeah, this Panther now likely to go down. Panther trick on the floor. Uh, Razor's got to be a little bit careful, I think, with the victory points. He's surely got to be a little careful. Oh, veterancy too instantly on that Pershing. Is trying to push out on the left to try and get these victory points back online. Um, oof. Oh, I can hear a big Calliope barrage. Where's that going down? On that MG. Is it going to be enough? I mean, again, it is shooting from a long distance. Oh, and it takes the very last rocket. Oh, no. Didn't take it down at all. Oh, my God. Allies are kind of in back. <laughs> um, um, I'm not sure I would agree uh, based on what we've seen so far here. Although... And Razor is kind of pulling back into this. He's, he's in a lot of trouble in the victory points. He needs to get those online as sharpish or he's going to be in big trouble. Um, but apart from that, I think he's playing... He's played relatively well. He's hung on when he needed to and he's had the best of some of these important engagements. Um, and has made... It, it's fair to say he has made the most of Allied War Machine when, he's, when he has used it. Uh, although, of course, uh, Architect could have been a little bit uh, sneakier. Uh, in avoiding taking out those tanks um, if he'd been a little bit more on top of that. Razor being really aggressive now. Clearly smells blood, wants to push in there, make the most of his veterancy on these. And pushing, he hasn't uh, currently got the resources for another Alder War Machine, so he needs to be a little bit careful, although he could get crew repairs. Um, oh, oh, they're blocking each other now. It sounds like there's a pack in there as well. He's got to be really careful he doesn't go down. Damaged engine there. Only 243. He's so close on munitions. 245. 246. 247. Oh, and it does go down. Oh, will he have enough time? He's got it. He's got it now. 250 in the bank. He could press it. He could pop it. He could pop it. Decides not to pop Allied War Machine there. Ah, what would I have done? I think at that stage you've got to do it. You've got to pop it. He hasn't got the resources to get in another Pershing for a little while now. Not particularly high resource income either. If it was going to help him to keep these units in his base for any length of time, it would have been worth it. Big Calliope Barrage didn't seem like it took anything out there. Um, now, oh, he's going to really struggle to prevent these guys pushing out. Only 30 VPs in the bank, so he has to keep the pressure on. He can't afford uh, to let anything get away at all, really. This rifle is got with only six, with six members in it, but with only 10% health, it's actually driving me insane. One member goes down, two members goes down. Three, four, oh, and it'll go down almost instantly. That's just almost the issue without using it at a triage center. Oh, no effort going to, to save these riflemen at all. Oh, he's popped a hide war machine now. I mean, yeah, of course, it's good to get these two things uh, back on the field, but just imagine if there had been a Pershing helping in that engagement. Uh, Architect not choosing to uh, move away from this engagement and... Uh, prevent these being refunded. He's more than happy to refund them. He could have just moved away for a few seconds there uh, and then gone back in to get the kill. But nope, decides to go straight in there. Instantly refunded. I think that's a bit of a, uh, a mistake there from Architect. And now the Sherman popping in the back of the base. Might be able to take up this Krieg Barracks if um, Architect isn't careful. He's going to have to retreat some of those units 
uh, took that out. Otherwise, he is going to lose that. Here they go. They have retreated. Um, uh, this Sherman is going to have to be a little bit careful, particularly if he pops out, uh, the inspired assault. Could easily take that out. Boom, 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 boom. Look at those Panzer Shreks going from. In the last replays we watched, they were missing basically every shot that was over medium range uh, and were extremely inconsistent and very frustrating to use. So now hitting basically everything. Uh, so a good bit of, a good bit of luck. Uh, a quite significant change there uh, as is really helping an Architect in this case. Seamus now pushing on the left hand side. I mean, Razor losing those two rifleman squads it's going to gonna really hurt him, actually, because he hasn't got much capping force on the field at all. He's got one mortar, with uh, which isn't exactly a capping unit, you wouldn't say. Uh, and then two weakened infantry squads there. A rifleman and uh, a engineer squad. But it could be, of course, that he's deciding he's going to keep this right-hand side locked down. Two victory points in the process and stop the bleed in that sense. And then maybe he's going to go for the annihilation victory here. I think I might go for that, actually. Oh, big Calliope barrel. going down on... I'm not sure if he knew there was anything there. Oh, it does take out that Pioneer squad. Nice move. Oh, big push out on this side. Oh, right. Oh, I think you're in trouble here, Razor. He is going to be able to push this uh, squad away. I would think... Oof, huge shot, though. Huge shot. But he will lose this right hand side and the two victory points with it. He hasn't got victory points to play with. He needs to get this online as soon as possible. And perhaps use this... Squad here to try and protect this victory, but although the Sherman has it lost its main gun. This guy is all online, but he can't afford to lose it, uh, so he's going to have to be careful there. Pershing and um, Calliope are on the map now, but aren't, of course, able to cap those points. I uh, wonder if this is going to send the, the mortar over to the side and try and get that online. Not yet, at least. Uh, oh! And now we see another Panzer IV is out in the field, although the Pershing, perfect timing, is going to be able to chase that down. Even with the Veteran C2, I'm not sure it'll stand up to that too easily. He's going to try and chase that down. I can see the Rifleman squad on the left hand side here. He's just moving down to the other victory point. He's going to try and get that online and stop this bleed, although 23 points. And of course, a 3 to 1 bleed because I'm much faster than a 2 to 1. So I'm not sure he's going to have the chance to get over there. This Pershing is a huge. He's, he's going to do some huge amount of damage in the base now. No answer for it at the minute. Creeks breaks, we'll get down, but will uh, Razor be able to get the cap off? 3 to 1 bleed, as I was saying. He's lost down to just 11 victory points. He's got to think of to strike the sort of force on the field where he might be able to um, force an annihilation victory here, because particularly with Allied War Machine, which he's almost got the things for, he just about gets it online. Now it's a 2 to 1 bleed, effectively. Is he going to be able to get that? 4, 3, 2, just about gets it online and now is he going to be able to force this to force this out the annihilation could easily happen here he's got two tanks in the base oh but here comes a, a grenadier and pioneer squad this rifle retreat no why would you retreat you have to keep that victory point online razor what are you doing he's just going to rely on the calliope to try and take this out oh the calliope is not reliable at all we've seen throughout this game it's not reliable at wiping squads He's relying on it to take it out, and it doesn't. I think he's going to have to move over one of these Shermans quickly, because he can't afford to even have that point be decapped for even a millisecond here. This rifleman squad isn't going to be able to get over there in time to take it out. The annihilation victory in the base could easily happen, particularly if he pops out like War Machine. But he loses the point, and with it, I think he loses the game. Oh, my goodness gracious me. I tell you what, going back to these old games is really, I mean, it's sort of painful watching people lose games in ways that I think today, um, you know, we just have that sort of like accumulated game sense over now 15 years that we would know, we would know that you can't rely on the Calliope Barrage to absolutely wipe a squad, even today's Calliope. So to retreat those riflemen and not have them uh, helping out in that battle, to not bring a Sherman over and make sure the VP stay online and stay in your favour. I mean, Razor definitely uh, could have won there with the uh, with the munitions in the bank for Allied War Machine. He's essentially got some manpower sat there in the bank that he can uh, that he can pop on the map at any time whenever there's a big engagement. 
Could have picked and chosen his engagements a little bit better just at the end there to get the victory. But as it is, Architect, I think pushing pushing where necessary, he was, did a really good job of um, taking out the tanks and knowing exactly when to pop Inspired Assault, which of course has its downsides as well as its advantages. So you have to be careful when to use it. I think he did that really, really well. Um, surprised Razor on a number of occasions and taking out tanks before they could really make an impact on the field. Uh, and in the end, I think that told. His, you know, basic uh, central army of Grenadiers was able to stay alive throughout the game and has tipped it in his favour in the end. I think Razor will be kicking himself, but uh, that's how these games go. Uh, so thank you for tuning in today. I hope you've enjoyed this first replay from Patch 1.5. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you again next time.